With this setup here, we can record up to eight individual virtual participants, as well as be able to upload them to Dropbox or to my editing computer over there, all within just a matter of minutes. So let me show you how it works. We mainly use Zoom. It will work with other video conferencing platforms, but it does work best with Zoom. And I'll show you why in just a second. But doing the recordings are two ATEM Mini Pro ISOs. And then we have four laptops here. One will be the Zoom host, or we'll start the Zoom meeting on. And the other three will join the same Zoom meeting and then pin our participants in the correct locations, push record, and get ISO records of each participant. I'm getting ready to start a meeting here, so I figured I would walk you through the process um, and kind of explain everything as I go. So I have the meeting started from this laptop, I'm already joined over there. I'll go ahead and push join here. We're joined on this laptop. I'm going to exit full screen and then I will drag this window up into my multi view here. Full screen it, change to speaker view, and then you always got to remember to pop out the participants in the chat. That way, in case anyone um, sends a message or tries to join while uh, this, you're doing a recording, it won't pop up at the bottom of the screen. It'll pop up um, on this laptop here. And then use these little windows here to pin your participants, pin the first screen, pin that one to second screen, and you can see they're popped up there going into the ATEM Mini Pro, giving us our individual ISO records. I'll do that for these ones as well. Switch to speaker view, participant and chats are already out. Pin our feeds and kind of just repeat this process for all of your laptops until you have your participants in the correct location. Cool, so I got everyone pinned where I want them. Now, let me show you what's going on with this stream deck here. The two blue buttons here are reset time code and record all. Record all obviously just starts to record on both the ATEM ISOs. Reset time code resets the time code on both the ISOs so that way syncing them up in uh, editing is very easy to do. And then these buttons down here, multi-view, cam one, two, three, and four, those are controlling what I am seeing on my displays here. So currently I'm looking at a multi-view. If I push cam one, it will show cam one, two, three, and four. That's so when I have participants on and I'm trying to frame them up, uh, make sure their lighting looks good, make sure their audio is good, I can full screen them and get a, so I can have a better view of, uh, you know, what their frame looks like and make sure everything is looking and sounding good on their end. So both these ATEM minis and the stream deck here are networked into our 2020 Mac mini that I have sitting over in the corner over here. And that is where we are running our ATEM control software as well as uh, companion for the stream deck. All right, so I can show you how that works here. Both of the ATEM ISOs are actually networked directly into the Mac mini. So that way you don't have to fiddle with, um, with IP addresses. You can easily just select and change the two of them. Um, I'll go ahead and change the name of the meeting or of the recording We'll call it meeting one, two, three. And here's where you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have recording all, not necessarily recording all cameras, but record all ISO inputs. You're gonna make sure you wanna have that selected. And we can come up here, go to connection, go to our other ATEM ISO. We'll switch that one to meeting one, two, three. And then here I'll push reset time code and as you can see the time code reset it actually resets for both of them and now pretty much I'm ready to hit record but uh, before I do that let me quickly show you how companion is running 
for our Stream Deck. Um, as I said, both of the ATEM ISOs are networked directly into the computer. Um, click Edit, Target IP. That's how Companion can tell the difference between the two. We labeled, this one is ATEM Mini ISO Orange and then ATEM Mini ISO Right. So those are my two different ATEM ISOs. Now oh, let me show you the buttons. So record all. We have macros set up on each ATEM Mini and this will ATEM Mini ISO Orange. Run macro, record all, and then A10 Mini ISO write, run macro, record all. So hopefully that makes sense. I'll show you the macros here. Reset time code, start record, and the same two macros are on the other one, and then these buttons are just triggering them. This is just running a macro to put multi-view in my aux output or multi-view output. These ones are switching it to camera one, camera two, and these are all native. Uh, these ones are native companion commands, multi-view. We had to make a macro for that one because that is not a native companion command. All right. So we're set up there, we have our meeting named, and now when once everyone joins and I have them pinned and ready to go, I've done all my tech checks, I will push reset timecode and then push record. Now I can see easily right there that I am recording on both ATEM ISOs. And then once everyone's done, I'll say great job everyone, stop the record. And I can grab my SSD here. We use the Samsung T5s. Plug it in to the Mac Mini. Get rid of these windows. Open up my drive here and I can see I have meeting one, two, three. In here I have my audio source files. Uh, I actually have a DaVinci project file the program feed, I don't really care about any of those. What I want are the video ISO files. That's camera one, two, three, and four. Um, typically I will rename this to whatever it is called and then simply drag this over to our Dropbox hot folders here. We have the Dropbox desktop app installed. So once I drag these over and they're on um, our drive here, then you can see it's already syncing to Dropbox. I can check the status of it, syncing three files. A couple of them are already done. Cool, and now we're pretty much done. So I'm able to go from finishing a recording here to uploading to Dropbox and or uploading to my editing computer in a matter of, was that 60 seconds? Um, and then the files are available for our editor within you know, depending on how long the video is, an hour or two. And yeah, it just makes it super fast. We're able to turn around videos super quickly. And our clients are always thrilled when, you know, we have those quick turnaround times. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section. If you have any recommendations for other videos that you'd like us to do, also leave those in the comments section. Thanks.